so that time you can just give an introduction of what exactly you're doing so so that it, we can make it a sort of a discussion sort of a thing rather than at one stretch if everyone start getting an introduction no one, no one will know who exactly who and and what exactly you do so so let's make, make it a thing whenever you ask some questions just briefly give an introduction of yourself and then we'll pick up those questions again okay so if no more question is there anything from anyone or well, let's move on then uh okay so let's start with what the solving a big data problem okay so introduction to big data um so what's big data three v's of big data so source of data flight all this this are the agenda for for today's today's program okay so how do timeline who is using big data job trends of big data i think i think the last one would be the much much curious point for everyone uh that me that me i make make that itself first so so expected job trend as by the end of um 2016 mid or end the expected shortage of resource is 194000 and that's that's from many of those big big consultant firms who is their thorough research and investigation so i'm not talking about the job opportunity i'm talking about the shortage of resource is going to be uh, close to 0.2 million okay 194000 that's exactly the estimation says so one key thing which i want to tell you guys is uh if you if you are in an environment which you think okay i i got i i learned something from the big data environment uh three months I'll i'm going to take a training i'm i'm going to get some sort of a job because if you are if you going to do the project a whole heartedly and and stuff it for sure because that's how the market is now it's pretty much hot cake so once you get a job then okay i i'm going to have a smooth ride absolutely not every three months i'm not trying to trying to make you guys aware of, okay okay i have i have chosen a wrong field so let me come out of it that's not my intention but i just want to be frank and open to you guys every 3 months you have to make yourself up to date because that's how the trend is going so new technology is coming up every 3 months you need to understand what exactly happening in terms of big data space since it's completely an open space n number of guys are doing research on their own area and their own space coming up with new trend and technologies for easiness you have to pick up those things start working on it so you might be you might be dealing with so that's exactly what is happening so how do one was there which is pretty much high in demand now suddenly move to hadoop 2 now there is spark which is in demand so we'll be cover, not covering we'll be giving you some sort of a documentation also in terms of spark so technology after technology maybe 3 months 4 months there's something completely new stuff coming up you'll have to adopt it as part of your learning curve and then you'll have to move on i mean you need to equip yourself make up your mind or set set your mind that in mind i mean that's all the way forward for getting your big data platform otherwise getting a knowledge run 3 months okay i'm ready for then if i start running that's that's not how it's going to you have to really come off come out of your comfort zone and start working on it i mean that that's that's only a way out for for getting into the big data environment evolutionary features of hadoop that's that's something which you're going to see now so let's begin the journey mm. what's big data okay so we have been talking about a lot more so some of the example given over here i would like to cover on my example so anyway this will be shared with you guys so you'll have all this all the stuff in your place so there are some from my past experience as a trainer i i, I know some of the research which i conducted and some of the in data so that's something which i am going to share with you guys so that some of the interesting interesting events which is going to come in future and how exactly big data is uh covered big data is covering for the, those aspects that's what i would be interested in so now first when we sp speak about 3 v's i guess everyone should be aware of what exactly is a 3 v so first and foremost why big data okay so you might have seen the volume of data the huge and humongous amount of data that's coming in okay so let's take some of those examples now so you might have you might have seen the the google itself has emerged in in 1997 i guess that that's where larry page and sergey brin started their google journey 
that started with the emergence of one sort of a data facebook any of the social media sites it just started with orkut then facebook and any 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 uh, instagram <laughs> dropbox anything to say so any of those aspects has created a humongous amount of data into our ecosystem so how exactly are we going to make meaningful insight of those data so that's that's one key aspect and we talk about that's exactly volume for us okay the next one is going to be variety what exactly is a variety so all this while we have been handling or we have been playing around with the with the table structure format data so when i say structure format it's just like your excel sheet so i i'm assuming everyone knows what exactly an excel sheet right so row and column you have very structured kind of a data you have so that's exactly what we have been playing around because banking transaction or any of those transaction traditional environment that's exactly the kind of data we have been dealing with very very formatted kind of a data mm -hmm. but now with the emergence of twitter uh, email or many of those aspects so social media and all you don't find a very aligned format or the very formatted data so you have you're getting lines text after text lines after line different like garbage kind of a data it's all haphazard data xml kind it's a semi structured data and all those things so variety of data so everyone started now posting videos using whatsapp using youtube videos you can see number of posts that is been going to the facebook so so the entire population is around close to 7 billion but we get 3 billion posts are going photos are going in facebook in a month so that's exact and, and that that's multiplying every every alternate month so that's exactly the kind of growth that we're talking about so that's the first fact variety of data so all this while before 2000 maybe we had to deal mostly only with the row and column very structured one but now environment has completely changed right so now we have to deal most more inside with unstructured data okay and and now the other one is the velocity so what exactly is the velocity the speed with which data is coming up so previously we had so why exactly the speed fast matter comes in the plane of data comes in i have i was been waiting i have enough time to do a data crunching because my data is not so huge enough so i i have time for data crunching and give the result back but now the volume of the data has grown to that large extent it is start real time data are coming into my system and and the client want immediate action to be taken because think of an example your credit card is getting misused by someone so i i, I cannot wait for two or three days to come up in analytics and find out okay is there a, is there a place where i can really place my card and then find out is there a misuse by the time the entire money would have been gone out of your account so real time data analytics that you need to do and come up with the result so basically you might have you might have observed so in case if you're not someone who withdraws the money quite frequently and all of a sudden you had some need i mean that that's the experience which i have so i have withdrawn some 10000 from um, account and and within within the next 2 hours i have withdrawn another 10000 and within next half an hour time the next 10000 so 30000 when it draw it will call from uh, my bank stating okay there is a there is a very continuous retrieval or is that the right person or is it the your class uh, card is misplaced or something of that sort so that's exactly the kind of analytics so the moment they see some sort of a un, i mean suspicious transaction happening immediately that needs to be uh, projected out and some sort of on operator or or kind of a technician needs to be intimated about it and that immediate action needs to be taken so that's that's exactly the velocity of data we are talking about okay that's in terms of intake as well as the outgoing data so processing as well as how exactly data is been received both comes in the velocity factor so now couple of more we's are getting added to it one is veracity and another is value veracity means it's it's the accuracy of the data so so how well our data is so that you need to get a very cleansed kind of a data or you need to make a cleansed data to get give a better prediction for this data then only as we told in the previous example like how exactly i am making a meaningful insight of my business that's possible only if you have a more cleaner data so if you have if you're coming on with complete junk and garbage data or maybe it's pretty old data 
So it, you may not be able to give a much better prediction for the future, right? So that's exactly what, what we need to do with the data. If I get a lot of data, I need to make utilize this data make the prediction next five years down the line, where exactly my business is heading. If it's going in the right track, I'm pretty happy. But if you say, based on my prediction, that smaller declining prediction is what has been happening. So that's exactly one place which you can see if you're a LinkedIn user, you can see LinkedIn gives you a prediction, the number of users that looked into your profile. Uh, maybe maybe it's 15, but, but coming month, you, you don't, you, if you don't do any action, you may, you may see a dip in your number of visitors. So that's exactly some sort of predictive analytics that, that's, that they're doing over there. All right. So now let's move on to this example. So, so some of the interesting examples which I want to share. So, so do you guys know about, okay, let me see uh, any more questions. Uh, what is the easiest way to get updated? Okay, so I think, yeah, we, we, I, I was not able to get in sync with those uh, messages that you guys were sending. Apart from its page, what else needs to be known to get a good job? Okay, uh, Mac is asking for, for benefit of all of this. So you are throwing away all your doubts, all your this thing. There is no uh, no expert over here, no, including me. So I, I'm also learning every day of my time to get, get those knowledge in. So let's put in the, put in the chat for the entire uh, people so that everyone knows what exactly. So, so yes, so current, I would say Spark is getting a, a very big traction in, in terms of the market because Spark, Spark is a big thing that you need to know. Before knowing the Spark, you need to understand all the ecosystem, what we are talking about. Uh, 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 so yes, apart from what you're learning. So we are also going to, going to share you some sort of Spark documentation. So that will be one good, good thing. Uh, you're facing some sort of a glitch in my voice. Uh, um, if my speaker, everything is in fine. Uh, is that the case with everyone? Is that due to my data connection? Data connection should be fine because I've just updated. <clears throat> uh, is anyone else? You're facing some issue. Let me pick my mic. <clears throat> uh, let me know if it's if it's any getting better or uh, okay okay so so I'm, I'm getting a little faster because uh, because 10 30 deadline we have uh, and and these are not some of those topics which we need to we need to really put it in our mind and grasp it so this is some of the very very casual talk which I'm making <laughs> no it's not a matter of that uh, so yeah maybe when I when I speak faster maybe what he meant to say is there might be a slight glitch coming up maybe uh so so when the so that's something we want to know from you guys so so just make sure uh you guys uh tell me i mean if if i'm 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 slightly overpaced or or slightly reduce my pace how exactly so today i mean i it's it just a just a how exactly an icebreaker to a big data environment. So I, I might be going a little bit more. <laughs> okay, back at rest is fine. All right, so a so lot more technology has been covered over here. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Uh, okay, uh, that's fine, that's interesting. Uh, let's, let's pick it up. Okay, so so maybe maybe the next session onwards, I, I would really like to get those feedback in because telling that okay, I mean, as and when you think, my pace is so some of those things, maybe in a casual talk, it's easy to easy to go fast and then I mean, you, I don't want you you guys to register many of those things really. I mean, if you just like reading a novel, I mean, in case if you want to get it re registered, register. But but from our next session onwards, these are the core technical stuff or the core details that we need to end. So that's where I want you guys to register. So I'll, I'll use my own technique from my basic training experience, what sort of a uh, technology or what of a technique and I need to adopt so that I get you guys more registered using some of those typical examples. So I do create my own, my own animation, my own figure. So I, I'm more a, more a, can I, what exactly you say? So visual person. So I, I have created based on those, some of those slides, which it's easy for you to, you to get those concept grasp 
easily. So, so we will definitely do that. But yeah, as in when you give, a re I, I'm expecting a real time update from you to you guys too. So, so make sure you're telling yeah, your pace is a little fast, go slower so that so that we can we all all can be in sync. Feel free to do that. Okay. Yeah. Typically, sample which. You okay. So. So scroll down and sense. Okay, this. Uh, I'm just putting it now. Okay, this this uh, screen you can you can yourself find out what was the and it's almost interesting. I want to tell you is I mean, uh, uh, how many of you know th there is a there is a there is a microscope has been uh, telescope in fact has been built. By by European nations in collaboration with the European nations, which has been which was planned for a 2022, I believe 2022 or 25, 24. Anyone aware of those stuff? Just so what is expected is that's going to bring in more closer accuracy of 5,000 years behind our scene, 5,000 behind, 5,000 years ahead. So those kind of a calculation is being what expected, and that particular micro, sorry, telescope is going to generate 160. Let me put that in facts. 160, 160 gigabyte of data, okay, per second. 160 GB of data per second, and that's expected data that's going to emit. So it's a huge amount of data per second. So how so think of an environment which can really capture it. So during that time, I think big data needs to be 10 or 100 times more powerful. Okay, so by 2024, so that's that's how maybe maybe some of us maybe still supporting it or, or not sure. So so this amount of humongous amount of data, if you're able to take up, make some meaningful insight of it, you need much, much powerful system. So that's exactly the kind of ecosystem what you're talking about and some other example what we need to know is um, uh, IOT I, I'm sure pretty much sure you guys might be hearing a lot of IOT Internet of Things or maybe IOE Internet of Everything so they wanted to have a human factor also being attached so that's Internet of Everything uh, IOT or IOE okay so that's that's the prediction is by the end of 2000 yes some of those guys were just doing their MTech and the highest studies right now. So some the research areas you might have heard about it. Uh, 2018 end, we we'll see a, a world where your refrigerator is going to speak that the guy who's going to visit you next week is a vegetarian and uh, he doesn't like uh, he he doesn't like any any high uh, high calorie or the kind of a food. He is he is more into proteins. So make sure you are, and your current refrigerator does not have much of the much of the liking towards. I mean, much of the vegetable that he likes. He likes more of broccoli and asparagus or whatever. So that a freak is going to talk to you, stating exactly the same. Okay, and 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 to a, think to the next extent, it can automatically go a, a big basket order. And then the moment you come back, without even your knowledge, someone would have already ordered a grocery for you. So that's exactly the kind of technology you're going to talk. And that's very, very soon. 2018 mid is just two years down the line. You're going to see such kind of technology in place. If you're a technology enthusiast, if you see some of those, a shirt has been made completely of yarn. Okay, so it's it's so <laughs> some of you guys. Uh, in the bachelor stage, if you don't want to wash your clothes, and that's exactly the shirt you should be looking forward for. That shirt, from your beginning of your life to end of your life, I mean, unless and until you don't shrink yourself or something, you can use that shirt. Never ever you need to wash that soul. It, it's, it's resistant to sweat. It's resistant to dust. Nothing can pierce inside that particular shirt. So each yarn or each thread of that shirt is made of semiconductors. That's exactly the kind of thing. And it's already made. It's already in place. So that's, that's exactly the technology what you're talking about so you can google it you should be able to see a lot, a lot of things coming up so and with an iot space what you're going to see is by 2018 end or maybe beginning of 2019 or mid 2019 what you're going to see is around 3000 devices interconnected devices so till now what we need to have is a machine needs to 
machine machine interaction was not a very very huge step but now that's exactly the kind of new emerging technology going to be your machine to another machine is going to interact with each other human intervention is not even required and that's what exactly you can see many of the google car self driven car a lot of new kind of scientific it, it's we are going to see exactly those science fiction movies in the very very coming futures that that's exactly what you're going to see so at the end of it when we speak about all this stuff it's all play around with data so so all these machines all this stuff as a flight from singapore to london when it goes it creates four petabyte of data okay so how do you crunch this where do you how are you actually going to cope up with similar kind of a data so that's exactly what you need to look up look up to so that's exactly where the big data is going to be a savior and come with a lot more of it okay okay now let's move on to the next slide before that let me okay so now let's move on let me have a time check as well yeah so we have exactly 40 minutes time period now yeah uh so so what you can see is the the blue portion of it when we say business transaction data this is exactly the the kind of data we are talking about the transactional data row and column so all this style we we had excel format sort of a thing or maybe a row column employee id employee name employee salary employee department id department name all these things what what we were been dealing with but that's look at the amount of data that is interesting but now with 1990 onwards you can see the social media emergence of all this social media you can see the the kind of curve that is being up with the web application data it's a humongous amount of web data unstructured data that has been overruled okay so and that's that's this crunching this data and make a business insight of it is is going to be the next business future so every industry is trying to cope up with that and trying to bring in new technology in space okay so basically you can see pharmaceutical i mean pharmaceuticals you can see telecom you can see manufacturing every industry there is no retail industry basically every nook and corner big data application is in place um uh, eric schmidt word from xc of google so so every two days now we create as much information as we did in the dawn of civilization up to 2013 so from 2003 how much amount of data we had accumulated okay that exact data is what we we, we are getting in a couple of days time so solutions for data exploding that's that's where the hadoop comes into picture and uh it has become a old story so so how many of you know about the hadoop stuff can a data come from radar system comes through as big data yes exactly so any system any system that's going to push in a huge amount of data is uh, big data system is another another application where transformers or, or those signaling mechanism where till now we're working with gb gigabyte uh so now it's we are we are in data with terabyte petabytes of data right so so let's 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 pick up uh so you guys know what what is the uh let's let's pick it up uh okay let's let's pick up some of our uh engineering or computer science information so how exactly one byte first i have bytes data then it's going to be kilobyte uh megabyte gigabyte what exactly next terabyte petabyte da Yeah, even I don't recollect some of those now. Ah, uh, yes, petabyte. Ah, uh, no. Before yottabyte, you have something, something else. Exabyte. 
zettabyte, right? And yota byte. I think that's, that's, right? So this is exactly how the data is. So till now our ecosystem, we have been dealing mostly of this type and we have, we have entered this space as well to a very little extent. But uh, is there a Bonodo byte? Okay, I never heard of it. So it, it comes after Yota byte, is it? Okay, that, that's, a, that's a learning for you. Thanks, thanks. That's exactly what our expectation is. So, so yeah, Bonoto byte. Yeah, so BB, is it? Great, so a learning from Chapna has given you all a learning. Bonoto byte. So I'm assuming it's after, yeah, she confirmed it's, it's after Yota byte. So Peta, Ixa, Zeta, Yota, and Bonoto byte. Okay, great. Thanks, Chapna. Uh, right. Okay. That's that's how you might be calling yourself. All right. Okay. Now, okay. I, I saw some questions coming up. Uh, Kaushik, can big data be considered some advanced version of SQL or DBMS table structure? Uh, no, I wouldn't call that Kaushik. So, so very simple, simple thing. When my when I till all this while I was dealing with where is our data. All while I was dealing with GB of data, I really wouldn't call this a problem for me. But when I start dealing with terabytes of data, petabytes of data, yes, this is a big data problem for me. So I need to find out a new mechanism with which I can process this data. That's exactly what, what I need to come up with a new solution altogether. So this humongous amount of data and humongous variety of data, I mean, when, when I say humongous amount of data, that's not really rows and columns alone. I need to deal with images right you you click your selfie you immediately post it to facebook poor guy how exactly he is doing it you don't even care so that's exactly where we need to think about the processing and and the the, the kind of technology that has been happening so so the moment you post to your uh, beautiful snap you can't even afford to have i mean 10 minutes 10 seconds is maximum you can wait for that to be posted and i'd like being clicked on it right but the technology, how many number of guys? So out of 7 billion, I, I think I think currently there is a three and a half billion account or something created on the Facebook. So three and a half billion guys, out of which maybe maybe two billion guys would be posting the photos, right? So within 10 seconds, if you don't get the photo, you start getting the Twitter and start, Facebook is not as good as what it was supposed to be. Uh, that doesn't give, does not give me my satisfaction kind of, kind of, those things. So that's exactly what you're talking about. So immediate, fast response is what really we wanted. So we, our patience is also being tested. And for this is what we need big data solutions. Okay, so now RDBMS able to handle up to GB of data. Still we use Scoop to use RDBMS data in Hadoop. Uh, Mac has a question, RDBMS able to handle up to GB of data. Still we use Scoop to use RDBMS data. In Yes, so some of this, some of, yeah, so typically what, what is happening now in some of the scenarios, so I just want to have a time check, yeah, 30 minutes is what I have, okay. So some of the typical scenario what's happening is even we had, I mean, when I was supporting some of the client, uh, they were, they came up with a, a proposal telling that, okay, we have some sort of problem and we want, want a, a big data solutions for it and when we are doing a solutioning and all those things, so we, we constantly ask them, so what is the maximum, what is the kind of a volume you're talking about? So initially they were hesitant. And then they they start talking, I mean, the kind of volume they're expecting maximum or, or deviated volume that's that's going to be 10 GB or or this is the kind of data. So that's really not a big data solution. So basically what's happening? So if, if you're trapped, 10 GB of data with the big data solution, you are actually, you're going to get a degraded performance, okay? So when I have humongous amount of data and I, I use those big data solutions, I'm going to get a much, much rigid and a better performance. Whereas I have small amount of data and then I'm going to do for big data solutions, I'm going to get a weaker performance, it's degrading with that. So, so what is that? Some sort of a saying is there, jitna or the chadar, or something like that. So, so everything, I mean, since there is a new emerging, emerging technology in place, doesn't mean that even a very small KB or an MB of a data, you're going to take it up and processing it. No, everything has its own, its own solution results. So you can't just, just come up with some, just because there is an emerging technology in the market, take it up, 
one KB of data, no, that's not going to work out for me. So I need to use exactly my case scenario for coming up with those solutions. So that's where I need to intelligently use use for it. But yeah, it, it's a valid question you've been, uh, I mean, Mac, you have asked. So because now there are a lot of customers who doesn't know what, how exactly to, to get benefit of this data. So what we're seeing over here is many of the case scenario. So what I would recommend you guys to do is do register for some of those uh, talks, big data talks and all those things. So that's where some of I collect some of this information. Um, so what they speak about is there are some independent consultants available. I mean, they are working some European re region as well as some they're catering so some of the US clients. So what they're going to do is they they look at those guys who, who has adopted the big data solutions and then they try to do some research on it. How exactly they are yielding benefit out of the big data. So many of the scenarios, what they found is they are not even really processing those data. So they are just trying to take this data, keep it aside because they themselves don't know what how exactly that needs to be processed. So there are very little number of customers in the current market who's actually exploring those value. But many of them are just taking it, pushing it because they know tomorrow they're going to reap some benefit out of it. So that's the intention behind. And that's what we say. 2016, 2017 is really what you're going to see an explosion because as for our research, what it says is around 52% of the Fortune 500 industry or the big industry has never even got into those big data ecosystem because they are waiting for others to burn their finger and coming out with the final product. Once the final product is ready, this 52% of the companies are going to adopt this technology. Okay. So when I say 52, there are remaining 48% of the guys who's already playing with big data out of which 28% of guys are the one who is playing with the test data. So what they're trying to do is what about the industrial data or manufacturing data, what they have, they're just trying to push the test environment do some analytics on top of it, do some proof of concept, do some case studies out of it and really trying to understand, okay, can I really reap benefit of big data out of it? So they have not really enough to move to a big data in the production environment and do it. So they are not doing that, right? So there are only 20% of industries currently doing real production environment and start exploring. And that's exactly the reason what we're telling is the real explosion of a data, the job market and all those things are, 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 something which is going to come up. So yes, you have invested your money in the right place is what really I want to say. <laughs> uh, there are N number of, so the moment you type in, uh, Sagar, I'm, I'm responding to your question. So where do you get information on big data talk seminars? So uh, I share some of those with you guys as well, because there are some independent consultant who's doing, um, forgot the name right now. So maybe, maybe in our next sessions, I'll, I'll try to pick up those information, share with you guys. Pretty, pretty, pretty interesting one. But, but yeah, oh, the, the caveat is, uh, it's going to happen really at around our 11, oh, not even 11, it, 12 and midnight and all those things. So, but once in a while, I mean, yeah, even the recording sessions, recordings are also available. So it's good to register for some of these sessions. Yeah. I'll share on those and uh, share, those information maybe in the next session or something. So I'll, I'll, I'll take a note of it and, and share it with you guys. Okay. Uh, now what is what does this slide say? Solution of a data explosion. Yeah. So node fail frequently. Uh, okay. So this this is something which we need to discuss when common infrastructure, which is efficient, easy to use, reliable. Okay, so now all this file, what was happening is, I, th I think someone has asked this question. Uh, so, so we had our DBM system, we have all the system in place. Uh, so one key difference from those traditional system is we have, we have a, we have a humongous amount of our system available with us. Okay which is used for our data crunching purpose, which has been used for the data crunching purpose. And, and all those, okay, so, sorry, I slightly got distracted. Okay, um, so, so what was happening? We have those uh, enterprise hardware, we call it as enterprise hardware. Everyone understand the difference between enterprise hardware and a commodity hardware? 
or, or anyone understand the difference between enterprise hardware and a commodity hardware? Okay, okay. So the benefit of others, some of the mass response answers. Yeah. So, so enterprise hardware is some of those servers or the machines that you can see in in a bigger bigger organizations. What you can see is it's a very very powerful hardware itself machine which can automatically the moment the data goes in it itself take a hardware replica picks it up somewhere. These are all gigantic machines and and when it says it's a huge machine, huge servers. It has its own cost as well. So, so there are n number of IBM, EMC, all those guys come up with those very, very high, highly sophisticated machines. So when this sophistication, the sophistication comes to these machines, the money also is going to come from go from your pocket. So that's exactly where. It is. So now with the big data solution, what exactly it's trying to do is the the laptop or the computer that you use in your at your home, take up those computers, take up those computer. Okay, connected, interconnected with, with multiple, multiple connections. And that's exactly how you're going to see a server, a big server in a real production environment. So you can take up your neighbor's laptop, borrow the neighbor's laptop, get, get everything as those connected, and then you're going to create a server on your own. And that's exactly the server that you're going to use in production environment. Okay, that's exactly how, you, how you're going to see the Hadoop environment over here. Uh, so, some of let me ask some questions so so in case i'm going to instead of so okay i'm, I'm going to run a business i'm going to run up maybe a maybe a restaurant or maybe a hotel hotel business and, and uh, i just want to save some money so instead of using a using a traditional enterprise hardware the big server i am i am i'm going to use some some 10 small normal household uh, computers what is the issue with that? What do you think is, um, why do you think the previous, the old, maybe maybe before 2001 has used such kind of a machine and what exactly is the key reason for that? What are 10 small computers better? Uh, but that has its own pros and cons. Any 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 pros or any any issues that you can see of using 10, 10 different computers, uh, 10 small computers. So if that was really better, as Fikal says, uh, cost effective but fall is three exactly that's exactly the max the point which you done right so anytime what you see is okay Akash has said small computers would have maintenance issue response time difficult cycle times great uh, pros because it pros says you can put it anywhere and cause it sometime cons is sometime it may become nine or eight yeah so exactly. So so that's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So what we are seeing, so from ten it may become nine or eight. That's exactly the stuff what you're talking about. So what is the issue with that? So think of you're running a business, maybe a hotel business. Someone is making a booking from your credit card. You see that that person's credit card information is lost from your from your records. The information he comes up. How, how, what do you think is going to happen to your business? Maybe maximum two months you're going to run your business. After that, only you'll have to make your relatives to bring to your hotel and make them stay. Other than that, no one is, no one else is going to stay in your hotel, right? So that's how exactly the customer satisfaction is going to be. So that no one wants to afford to have that kind of a scenario for your business to run. So fault tolerance, that's exactly what the prime factor. So how exactly fault tolerance is being handled when a small computers are being used? So that's exactly what you're going to see in our uh, uh, Hadoop environment, how exactly that fault tolerance scenario will be handled using a software, right? So that's that's what we see, yes. Node fail frequently, how exactly are we going to handle it? That's that's what we're going to learn. So now let me expand it here. Uh, now next one, over the years, new processing pattern emerged. Evolution of Hadoop. Stream processing, search, Okay, so this slide, I, I just want to leave it to you guys. You can just have a look how exactly it evolved. Uh, 2002, 2003, 2004, there was a Nudge project in place and how exactly that Nudge taken up by Yahoo has segregated, made it one part of Nudge to, to a Hadoop and another one. And how, uh, how many of you don't know what exactly is a Hadoop? How the name came from Hadoop? In, in, let's, let's put it in the chat. How, how did the name Hadoop, Hadoop come in? 
So what what is what is Hadoop? Yeah, Vikal, please. Teddy name. Uh, uh, yeah, this this elephant you can see a yellow elephant running over all over the place. It's actually what Hadoop is, but came from the toy of deck cutting. Sun is having an elephant toy. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, that's where the Mac has answered for us. Um, come from the toy. So basically, deck cutting, who is con considered to be the, the father of Hadoop, the key architect behind the Hadoop environment, he had during his, when he was doing this research, he had three year old son who was playing with a, the small, the toy, the elephant, the yellow elephant. He, he used to call it as Hadoop. So that's exactly the fund of Hadoop that came in. So uh, it's something which which interesting fact that you need to know. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Mac, for getting that. He wanted to give unique name. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. So, so you can see uh, uniqueness as well as you can see the Google. It's 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 a it's a typical name, right? So it's not the sophisticated or or any any technology in place kind of a name. So so that's that's the uniqueness with which we want to. You want to name that product, and then you can see all the ecosystem. So Pig, Hive, uh, Spark, everything of that is coming up with Taze. Any ecosystem that's revolving around the Hadoop environment, you can see similar kind of a naming. And pretty much animal lovers too now. Hives, what, Pig, <laughs> and all the name given to it. So yeah, just go through this slide and understand try to like the the environment. How exactly it evolved? Uh, what more? So these are the typical use AO, HPace, Netflix, IBM, IBM, and there are a lot more organizations. I mean, this is just a glimpse of it. There are huge, huge industry respective of their domain, where pharmaceuticals, telecom, manufacturing, any industries, every of industries are putting a lot of money on big data because you know tomorrow is going to be on on that trend <laughs> our interesting facts job trends of big data so that's exactly what i said so so this 0 0.19 0 0.194 million what, what we're talking about was a pretty old so so i i really don't know what's the current i mean job market scenario so this has been a research that's been conducted almost a year back so i'm i pretty much don't know the Anyway, pretty much for sure it has gone up maybe 0.2 million to maybe another 0.3 million or something is what expected because there's more and more industries coming up in terms of big data. So where are we? Yeah, we are on track. Uh, so these are the big questions being asked. How much is the quantum of the big data? So we know what we spoke about is not gigabyte or anything. We have a huge humongous amount of petabyte kind of a data when we're going to deal with that's exactly big data comes into picture. Why organizations are interested in big data problems? You can see that why data is increasing ex exponentially in the worldwide field. You know, the social media is the one key reason for it, right? Why scaling up is not a solution for a big data problem. So we're going to see. We're going to see that. Okay, so this is our next session what we have and we have exactly 20 minutes now. Let's let's open up the session for some of those questions. Uh, okay, so Vikal's question. Uh, then the Harub is going to be outdated after a few years. Basically, so that that that's why that's why I said you don't have a room, uh, you have a space for for relaxing. So for sure, Hadoop is going to get uh, get outthrown with the latest of technology because uh, because what I said is, but but whoever is going to so that's exactly the difference between our ambassador car and a, and a power steering car now. So so but anyone who is going to be there in the market, you need to understand the base of exactly the Hadoop. Uh, evolved so that architecture maybe maybe they might be using another 60 percentage of evolution from that architecture and bringing a new system from the scratch it'll be foolishness to do 
a complete ecosystem change. So, so what, what you're learning definitely is, so that's exactly the framework and structure which is going to come in, but more highly powerful and sophisticated system will be built on top of it. Yes, there is going to be some sort of installation procedure that uh, Akash has asked the question, yeah. Uh, it's not going to be, yeah, any learning. So definitely, so, so I started my journey with, with big, uh, many of those mainframes and, and server-based systems. So, so, but, but, but I do conduct around, around close to 20 sessions that I conducted. So there are n number of questions that have been asked how to compare with those things. So that's any of those learning, any of those past stuff and architecture is definitely going to make you a foundation more stronger. So definitely need to understand what exactly is Hadoop 2. Uh, yes, I think as part of the, so everyone can look into your dashboard, right? I mean, you're able to access your dashboard and there might be a, uh, uh, I think practice session or something of that sort, extreme, right? And so you can see three tabs. One is um, session, a PPT. Next one is assignments. And the third one is uh, practicals, right? So that's exactly what, the, the, that's that's a document which you should be having. So there's this instruction given for, for downloading stuff and all those things. So we can wait for another day. But I would say in parallel, if you do it, that'd be great. So that, so that we, you understand how exactly to play around with the system. So it's highly appreciate. I mean, recommended to go step by step instructions. What exactly is that? Try to get more information out of it and try to try installing the uh, installing the Hadoop environment in your environment, Hadoop system in your environment, so that you can play around with it. Uh, with that being said, so this version I'll wait for last five minutes so that you understand what exactly we are going to cover in the next sessions. So let's let's use this uh, floor for remaining questions. So we have exactly five, ten uh, minutes now. Hi, yeah. I have a question here. Yeah, who is this? Yeah, yeah, this is Tarun. I'm working as a solution designer at Dialogic Networks. It's one of the uh -huh. telecom. It's related to telecom industry, so we are into voice over IP solutions. All right, hi right, Tarun. Yeah. Oh. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So my question is, I need to get some clarity related to. Uh, one side is big data development, second is administration, and third is machine learning. So I need to yeah. have some clarity in all these three. I mean to say oh, one, right. one, one person is developing a car which is usually handy and one is with the, <clears throat> one is with the automatic steering. And somebody yeah. is using it. So ultimately yeah. if you see over the market, so market is more more interested to have the accurate data so that they can get some sales. So how yeah. development is more into market, I mean to say in terms of job or look, it, even it, it is more about the interest, you are into development, so you wanted to enhance your future in that side. So some way, if you give me clarity, it would be more easy for me to adjust myself into the correct domain. Sure, all right, good question. Um, um, Tarun. So one key aspect, what you need to know is, uh, so you might, you might be, you might have heard of, uh, since you have, since you have registered for this course and all those things you might have done your own sort of, sort of a groundwork to understand what exactly. So, so one common thing which you would have encountered would be CDH or Cloudera uh, installation. You might have heard of Hortonworks installation. Uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks, I mean, that, that's all the prime couple of guys whom I know about. So what exactly is happening in the current environment is uh, Hadoop, Hive, Big, all this associated environment or the H big data environment or a big data ecosystem are all open source product, okay? So every Apache product, they're making one product after one product, okay? And what exactly is happening? A Cloudera guy or a Hortonworks guy, what they are trying to do is they are trying to bring in all those best created product in the market available right now. They're going to club in all together. Okay, they're going to make it as a package. Okay, and then launching into the market, and that's also freely available for those for the learning purpose. But in case you're going to be an enterprise customer, it'll be at a very very minimal charge. They're going to provide a support for you. So that's exactly what administrative. 
<coughs> I'm sorry, administrative, administrative part of it. So what exactly Cloudera is doing is they're bringing up entire ecosystem together. Okay, almost almost ninety nine percentage ecosystem that is required for the environment they'll be taking. So entire pain of administration will be taken up for those guys. And 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 what we see in the current environment is almost eighty percentage of the, our installation are being CDH Cloudera Cloudera installation. And and that's becoming today. So some of them are being are taken up by even the Hortonworks. So Hortonworks also come up with exactly similar kind of packaging concept. So what will be happening is, so those administrative pain or or those kind of the pain part for doing those administrative has been taken up by Cloudera or Hortonworks. And what support they're going to provide, they're going to provide is in case if you have any issues, they have their uh, enterprise or the prime customer. So they're going to give you a solution within 15 minutes time or the time period the which has been given by the SLA. So administrative part as such is being taken off from the job market and this Cloudera or Hortonworks guys are doing it. But being all that said, <coughs> there are some certain specific installations or certain client which they said, no, I don't want to use Cloudera installations. I don't want to use Hortonworks installations. I wanted to use my own. I wanted to only install Hadoop. I want to only install Hive or Pig or very limited number of things. And then I wanted to, I don't want to give my environment to any other third party. And I wanted to set up only my environment. So those kind of a, a organization would need an administrator. The remaining would administrator role also will be played by the developer. So that, because that's as simple as that. So, so which or a, or a Cloudera guy is going to give you is a VM virtual machine. So you just need to take up that instance and install it. It's very, very simple installation. So, so that's exactly the, uh, the, the difference. So many of them, since many industry has gone for the CDH4, the administrative job has gone shrinked a very, very large extent. So that's why you don't see much of an administrative part happening in this uh, ecosystem. Does that answer your question? Okay, you had a machine learning aspect. So did that answer the first two questions? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. I understood. I understood. All right. So, so the so next one is... Uh, Sorry to interrupt you again. So let us All suppose right. if you talk about the banking services, uh, as of yeah. now, one company is their American Express. They have a lot of yep. customer base in US and other countries as well. So one of my yep. friend he is doing administration of whatever the server infrastructure they have. Yep. <clears throat> so yep. probably they will give it to the third party from there, whatever the raw data is there, someone is going to write a code on that the effective data they will take up and accordingly they will do some analysis so probably there is a scope of data scientist in some these companies who will not look for the infrastructure inside their premises whosoever yes, so, giving so, it to the third party <clears throat> uh, yeah so 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 client like mx and all those things they'll have a lot of pi information very critical information so those environment some of those do not want to outsource their environment to a uh, in outsource in the sense they do not want their kind of structure to be given to a cloud or something. So what will happen mm. is there are chances they'll they'll handle their own environment. So that's that <clears throat> in that space. Yes, there can be an administrative role coming up. And then what exactly the next question? What you're trying to do? Yes, data analytics are the data scientist kind of role. So so basically when they have huge amount of data. That's exactly what we very initial time we, we spoke about, right? The data scientist role. So, so when we get a huge amount of data, he's going to do some predictive prediction out of those data. So that's that's exactly the data scientist role. So, how many number of customers? So, so, so within one year time period, what is your expectation? Uh, am I going to get more customers, or is my customer <coughs> customer base is going to dip? In case it's going to dip, what sort of a correct measures I need to take? So, the, the, those are typically the data scientist role. Yeah, and and typically when you when you understand machine learning so so every day you are dealing with machine learning so so as simple as when you type in some command in your google page right so you are getting some sort of a so when you say big data so big data architecture and all those things so that's nothing but machine learning is coming and taking and giving a result very simple other example you can see your mails are being filtered as junk mail valid email valid emails are going to the inbox some emails are going to junk. How exactly it's happening? Nothing but simple machine learning. So what it's doing is, machine is learning you a particular. It's understanding 
based on the content that is being getting into the email, it's it's understanding, okay, this is not a relevant to this particular user. It's actually a promotional or a marketing stuff. And it's it's moved to a promotion folder automatically. It's going to be a marketing folder. I mean, in terms of G, G, Gmail I've talked about. So that's how exactly the machine learning. So it's, it's a very vast topic altogether, but I'm just giving you, trying to make you understand in a very, very hawk's eye view what exactly is the machine learning. So that's how it is. So learning, okay. machine itself is going to make a learning learning on its own. That, that's what it is. Mm. So that, that's a huge subject for data analytics. Okay. Yeah. Any Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. No problem. Yeah. And one more thing. So if somebody is giving to third party administration to cloud era or some other vendors, then yeah. your data would be open to public. Uh, not really. So they themselves would be having a lot of SLAs and all those things, right? So, so that's how the outsourcing emerging market and all those things, right? So if outsourcing would not have happened, we in an Indian market or, or would <coughs> never got a financial, financial customers, right? So if you say that out exposure is happening, India would have never got a, a financial market project, right? So, so there are certain SLAs and, and time limits mm -hmm. and how exactly <clears throat> all that, this are dealt. But that is more related to commercial. But somebody, let us suppose Amazon and Flipkart, they they yeah. having the same. I'm not talking about the big e-commerce e players. But if some uh -huh. small players, they would be having the contract with the same company, then their data yeah. is in open cloud. <clears throat> uh, see, so when you say open cloud, even the Amazon, I, I'm talking about the AWS system, that's completely an open cloud system, but that itself is very segregated or it has its own space for particular customers. So, so even if you say data in the cloud, it's not really an exposed to an entire population. So that cloud environment, it's segregated for only for that particular customer. So we have segregated mm -hmm. environment for each AWS and I mean customers. Or for that matter, any any sort of customer. So no one want their data to be exposed to any any third party or a competitor product, right? So we do our, our those cloud infrastructure maintaining organizations do maintain such kind of um, access restrictions for the outsiders. Okay, I got you. Thanks. <clears throat> no problem. Anyone? So uh, any questions? Uh, we have four minutes left. So let me let's quickly take you through what you're going to cover in the next session, solving big data problems. That's exactly what you're going to deep dive into what, what we're going to see a real. So all today was, was Gyan and, and, and how exactly our job market and stuff like that. So the real problem and real, how exactly we're going to dirty our hands for the next session. So next session, do we have really something that you need to do in terms of practical lab introduction to lay on applications? No. Yeah, but it'd be good in case if you have the first, I mean, I'm not sure whether you have first day itself, uh, first sessions where you need to install stuff because there is, we, we do cater in two different ways. One is we have, oven we have provided, okay? Just like CloudRera or any other installation we are talking about, Acadgill have its own VM instances created with full-fledged entire infrastructure, okay? That's one way of doing stuff or one way, Another way is you yourself can take up each of the components separately, okay, and create an environment for yourself. So that's also two, another way possible. And how to do that? There is a document being shared in that. So using an Acadical VM is a much simpler solution. I mean, it's all everything. The piece of cake is there for you. You just need to take it and taste it. The other one, you may have to start doing all the processing for making the cake. So that's, that's exactly the difference it's going to be. But those document, how exactly you need to do, that's been, that document is shared with you guys. You should be able to see in the, the third tab. Okay, so this is something which you're going to cover. Concepts, Hadoop cluster, what do you mean by Hadoop cluster and stuff like that? That's what you're going to see. And, and Hadoop one architecture, just like we said, ambassador car. So that's what you're going to see. And this is a journey from ambassador to a power steering. Okay. So I think now ambassador even come with power steering, right? So I don't want to... Yeah, I don't want to question that. Okay, anyways, name node, data node, all those things you're going to learn. Introduction to YAN applications. YAN stands for yet another resource negotiator. We're going to see deep into that. Phase one and phase two. All those things will be covered in Thursday's session. Uh, okay, uh, Vikal, so, so I guess... Um, 
answer to question six. Uh, that's the same question for me. Okay, so so I guess that's been answered, right? So any any more questions? So let me just see if although we had a Hadoop, but ultimately we may need such high end hardware too, right? Uh, but this is such a huge data. Oh, sorry, I missed this question from you, Sajik. So will this not incur more cost? Okay, so that's that's exactly what I said. So uh, we in the Hadoop environment is no more going to use those enterprise huge hardware. We are just going to take up 10 computer system that has been sitting in your desk, in your desk and all those things. We are going to take it up, connect it, interconnect it in a LAN or whatever network. And then we are going to make that as our real production environment. So when you run your hotel, borrow from your neighbor and you are going to make your Hadoop environment ecosystem for you. That's, that's exactly how it is. Don't borrow it by on your own. It's just a small computer. Okay, so Hadoop, Hadoop can be used with any technologies like Microsoft or anything. Yes, Hadoop now supports Microsoft, but, but religiously people are using the Linux environment, but yes, they do have now support, Windows support as well. Uh, to be frank, I have not really used any of those Windows support stuff, but I know that yes, with the Sigwin, you can play around with that, but, but sorry that I, uh, yes, Windows can be used, Chandran, uh, but I have I have not used it, but and I, I do have a limited knowledge. But I know that it can be used because it's almost one year back they have provided with the complete support for. But the recommended one, and easy, the primary one of doing it is any time limit. Yes, Windows support is there provided for for big data. Uh, okay, there is. Yeah, or do I need to get fresh Ubuntu installation? I using Cloudera, using VMware, will that be enough for training sessions? Oh, that's a question from Mac. Yes, Mac, I mean, that should be fine, but but once some of those data you may have to push into your environment and play around with, that even that should be fine, yeah. Uh, we, can, yeah we are on target for uh, now 1 minute 10, 31. So let me take up from last one more question. Uh, Vikal has asked, uh, we have only one system with only 4 GB RAM. Are we all are we all made the one system? Sorry, Michael, I didn't get that. So you have one computer with one GB RAM for your for your for your real production environment are you talking about? Yes, or okay. Yes, sir. Actually I was asking that uh, you just told us now that uh, we need the ten small systems and we were made yeah. the one big system. Yeah. So sir, that's why I'm asking. We have only four G B RAM. I, I am only having four G B RAM. So we all have to combine these things and make the cluster or what, sir? Yes, that's exactly how it is gonna be. So in case we're gonna have four G B RAM, so each cluster so each cluster of yours, or I, I didn't call it as cluster, that's exactly a node. Each okay. node of you is having four GB RAM. So that's how exactly we're going to process it. Okay, okay, sir. Yeah. And, and combined together, we're going to have get a bigger RAM. So that's that's how uh, we're going to process it. Okay. Yeah. So okay, we're sir. going to see that. I mean, yeah, we're going to see that that more in detail in the next session. So so how exactly that processing? There's a typical way of processing when I have four or five systems together and with a separate RAM in place. Yes, there is a typical way of processing it. That's okay. what we're going to see. Okay, so thanks. All right. Yeah, so with that being said, we'll wind up for today and you all guys have a good night. Uh, see you on Thursday, 9 o'clock. Thank you very much. Thanks, good night, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.